Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today I want to talk a little bit about algae again. I know we've been a bit algae heavy in the last few weeks, but it's been approximately six weeks, in fact, almost exactly six weeks, since I made a video about buying some new fish for this tank and talking all about the blackbeard algae issues I was having. Well, I've solved them. So if we call this day one, just have a quick run through the tank. As you can see, still got the majority of the algae. I have been going through, picking this off with my hands where I can, cutting off dead leaves, and scraping rocks a little bit. But this is day one. This is the level of algae. It's specifically, it's the blackbeard algae that I'm looking for these guys to go to town on. So if you have a look at this tank now in comparison to where it was six weeks ago, you can see that this was absolutely caked with blackbeard algae. Um, and now, all gone. There is the tiniest, tiniest trace still around in certain places, but the majority of it is completely gone. So I wanted to tell you what I did and how I did it. So in the last video, I talked about how I've been actually battling this for about a year, a year and a half. Um, and I literally did try everything. Now, I know that when I said that in the last video that I tried everything, people immediately came in and told me about all the things that I should try, and they were included within everything, I must admit. So, quick recap, what we're talking about here is when you get any kind of algae issue at all in your aquarium, it's generally down to an imbalance of some kind. It's either too much light or too many nutrients. Uh, so I know that and everyone starts from that place, but the challenge is actually finding out which it is and which nutrient it is you've got too much of um, and getting the levels right again. So in this tank, for instance, I knew I had a little bit high nitrate. I knew I was feeding high. Uh, this is a discus tank, so I want to feed it high. I'm growing up some fairly youngish discus in here. So I'm feeding them quite heavily. I don't want to sacrifice the health of the fish for the health of the plants, but I do want to have healthy plants and healthy fish. So it was all about finding what that balance was. So I had tried literally everything. I had tried all the standard stuff of uh, using Seachem Excel and dosing with that and spot treating the blackbeard algae with that. I tried cutting the light way back to only, I think I got as low as two or three hours a day with the lights. Didn't make a blind bit of difference. I tried all the chemical treatments. I tried the algae treatments. I tried uh, the, the phosphate treatments. I was religiously checking my um, test results. I couldn't get a handle or a grip on what exactly was going on. Um, so I know it was the nutrients were too high, but it was probably the food and that was the one thing that I was unwilling to sacrifice or change. Um, fine, if I wasn't keeping as many fish in here or I wasn't needing to feed as heavily, I could probably have got that quite easily, but I couldn't. And um, so I had exhausted all avenues and the only avenue I had left was some fish. Now this was fish that you can get to do a job. Um, the ones I tried in the past were Siamese algae eaters, but I just couldn't find any of them. And even when I could find them, while they had done a job for me in the past on blackbeard algae, they hadn't done a very good job. They would nibble and munch on it, but they wouldn't really get anywhere. Uh, and especially with the amount that I had, they just wouldn't have made a dent in it. So I tried something slightly different. I talked to a few people, saw some videos on YouTube. Always a great thing to check out videos on YouTube. Um, and we found some flying silver foxes. The reason I'm really happy about these is because not only are they great at dealing with the algae, they're also fantastic looking fish. They look like little miniature sharks. Um, they're really busy, really active. They're all around the tank. I haven't seen them going after the discus at all. Uh, one of the things you will hear talked about with um, any kind of sucking fish, so whether it's a, an algae eating fish, a loach, uh, um, a pleco, any kind of fish that is known for nibbling, people say, well, you can't have that with discus because you know it's just going to nibble your slime coat. The slime coat is like a kind of protective coating on the, the fish. It's what they use to feed the babies, for instance, when they're growing some young, uh, but also it protects them from all kinds of things. Uh, and what you don't want is another fish coming along and nibbling that. So that 100% didn't happen, not an issue at all. Um, I've been watching them like a hawk and it's not happened once. What you do find in my experience is that the younger fish that you get, the better a job they do on all kinds of algae. So whether that's a bristlenose pleco or any other, an otto for instance, like this little guy down here, 
when they're young, they really go for it. They go after the Abbey like they've got a mission. And when they get a bit older, they get a bit lazier and they, they kind of realise, hang on, this guy's dropping in some tasty treats on a daily basis. Screw this for a game of soldiers. I'm going to have some of that stuff. And they just kind of give up on the Blackbeard algae. But we've got a bunch of these silver sharks in here and they have absolutely gone to town. Um, now, that is phase one or stage one of the algae treatment in here. They have not done that alone. I've also had to make sure that I get the rest of it right. And what you'll also notice from the, the before and after pictures here, there's a lot more plants in there. So I've got a lot more plants in there to consume some of those extra nutrients. So as when the silver sharks do their, silver sharks, I keep calling them that. So when the flying silver foxes do their job and get rid of the blackbeard algae, the plants, uh, the mass of plants keeps that nutrient level down and um, so it doesn't come back and that's exactly what we want and it's worked a treat six weeks like i say then um, I, I couldn't have wished for anything better so i guess what i'm trying to say is the important thing is you can't necessarily just chuck in a bunch of these brilliant fish and expect all your algae problems to go away you have to deal with that initial problem as well so the things that i think have taken steps towards curing this is i do some co2 injection into this tank I think it was a little bit lax on the consistency, so I've dialed that in to be ultra consistent. It comes on at a certain time every day and it goes off at a certain time every day. It's actually linked in with the lights, so it's when the lights are on, the CO2 is on. So I've got a higher quality needle valve that I know is going to give me more consistent bubbles per second. Um, I had noticed that sometimes I would come down some days and I was getting one bubble per second, then I'd come down another day having not touched it and it would be three or four bubbles per second. Um, I think I'm currently running about three bubbles per second. Um, I made sure that my lighting was uh, consistent. Obviously everything's on timers. Um, I'm currently running seven and a half hours light for these. I've got two lights on the top. I turned one off completely, um, but now I've got them both back on again. I think they're given the right amount of light for the right amount of CO2. Um, I made sure I was really, really, really consistent with my water changes. I tend to do, um, at confession time, I would always say on videos I do two water changes a week, roughly 50%. Yeah, sometimes I would do two water changes a week, one of them is 50%, one of them might be 20%. Uh, sometimes I would just do one. Uh, so I got a bit lax, and I think we all do. Um, so I'm, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I will. For the last few months, stuck to that absolutely rigidly, made sure I did those two 50% water changes every week. I don't necessarily think that's the answer for everyone, but it, it worked for me, and I think it's because I want to keep feeding heavily that that's helped out. And finally, the, the addition of all the extra plants. So I've got some pothos growing out of the side here. Uh, I've got all the extra java ferns, I've got all the extra uh, Amazon swords in here, making sure that all the plants are kept healthy. I'm rubbing away any al algae that I saw in the first few weeks when I emptied them. I think one of the most important things when you're using doing a planted tank is when you first set it up or you first get the plants in and add in a bunch of new plants is to do really consistent water changes because um, it keeps the keeps the balance. I know I keep going on about balance, but I think balance is really the key to making this work. So I'm really happy with this. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I don't think it's a quick fix, but I think six weeks to rid the tank of the algae that I had in it is absolutely fantastic. And my next step here is to look into um, dosing the correct amount of fertilizers. So I have got more plants in there. They are consuming more. Um, again, a really good test kit is, is required to keep on top of these levels and make sure that they are also in balance and consistent. Um, so I'm trying to figure that out at the moment and dial that in. At the moment, I'm using these TNC uh, all-in-one fertilizers. Uh, one of them is the TNC Light because it's essentially a, a lower nitrate version or content than this. But it's proving slightly more complex because I'm doing such big water changes twice a week. So I'm probably going to look into getting a doser. In fact, I've already got a doser, but I, I might, I'd saved it from my marine tank, but I might employ it on this tank. So as I can add, rather than, because generally the instructions for any all-in-one fertilizer, they're much of a muchness as far as I'm concerned. Um, but generally it's you add x milliliters per week but when you're doing two massive water changes in that same period it, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what you're asking so i'm going to try and work out what i need to add per day and use a doser to add a really specific and again consistent and balanced amount every day then it doesn't really matter how much of a water change i'm doing because i'm still adding the same levels every day and thankfully i think that'll do me 
Um, I'm really happy with the way things are going, if you can't tell. Um, this tank has been a bit of a nightmare for me for the past year, trying to get it right. But um, I'm super pumped about how it's going. Um, I'm really happy that I'm seeing some really good growth. I don't know if you remember me putting in this plant here. This is the Ludwigia. Um, I put that in there uh, only a couple of weeks ago, if that. And it's already starting to take the shape that I wanted, because I wanted this to be a kind of a landscape aquascape where it kind of goes along here and rises and then drops off at the back. It, that was a bit of a hole, if I'm perfectly honest. And that Ludwigia is working out brilliantly. It's even starting to, the tips of it are going a nice deep red colour as well. Um, and I'm really happy with it. The only thing I'm not happy with is the black ghost night fish that's in here that on a nightly basis comes in and destroys everything. So he might have to go and live in a different tank for a while, but it's touch wood for the last few nights. He hasn't uprooted anything. So hopefully he's getting the message when I just put it all back and spoil his fun. So I just wanted to drop that in there because often you see these tanks on YouTube where they look absolutely fantastic and beautiful. Um, I worry that sometimes nobody ever shows the the bad side of it when things go wrong and trying to bring it back again. Um, I, do, I do like to share everything, all the good and the bad. Um, it's one of the things that I'm really proud of is getting this tank actually looking nice again. So hopefully it'll stay this way. Um, but if it doesn't, I'm sure I'll share it with you. So make sure you click that subscribe button and I'll share with you all my joys and all my woes as well. And you can follow along and see what happens in the future. You can also click the join button down below and become a member. Um, my members may have seen some snippets of this before because I posted some pictures just for the members alone. Um, but I subscribe, that means just as much as anything else. Um, I've got my Facebook groups, Facebook page and Instagram if you want to see. I'm trying to post daily on there as well. Um, but yeah, follow along and you'll see what happens in the future. So we've got this tank looking good now. Will it stay this way? Have you got any other tips? Do you want to tell me what I've done wrong or right down in the comments? Uh, but let me know what kind of things have worked for you in the past. There will be some people down in the comments who will no doubt want to tell me that all I needed to do is add some XL and that would have solved all my woes. Uh, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case for this tank. Um, I think I went through two whole bottles of XL and it just, I wasn't getting on top of it. So I think it is a combination of making everything as consistent as possible, whether that's lights, CO2, uh, feeding, water changes, you've got to you've got to get that regime and stick to it and automatic timers are a godsend in that uh, position. I don't think that would have done it for me alone. I think the addition of the fish to do that job for me um, is definitely something that I had to do because they just went to town on this place and they, they totally wiped out all the blackbeard algae. I'm so happy with them. And the fact that I really like them is because they're actually really cool looking fish. They're really pretty, they're really active. Um, who wouldn't want that in their tank? But anyway, thanks for following along. I hope I haven't bored you with all my talk of algae in the last few videos. Um, like I say, if you're interested in this kind of thing, please click that subscribe button or click the join button if you want to know more. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.